All right, guys. So in this video series, I want to kind of touch base on the different DeFi protocols slash initiatives. And the first one is Aave. Now, before we begin, I want to kind of talk through the definition of DeFi it stands for decentralized finance. Now, this is a misnomer. At the end of the day, there's probably only one decentralized financial initiative, and that is Uniswap. So Uniswap burned its keys. Basically, the only thing that can be geo-blocked is a front-end UI, but everything on the back end is completely running permissionless by itself. So anyone can go and use Uniswap. It's a permissionless, truly decentralized financial initiative. But once again, remember the real DeFi, the, the OG daddy is Bitcoin. Aave is really cool. Aave, I would say, is a new variation compound, a lot of differences. But remember, Aave, even though they call it DeFi, the team and founders still have the admin keys. Now, obviously, they recently upgraded into different DAOs and they have a governance. I'll get to that in a second. But in essence, what Aave is, is let's call it a smart contract bank or a smart contract lending platform where you can stake different crypto assets that you have. And then you can borrow different crypto assets with your staked collateral. That's it in a nutshell. Obviously, they have other types of features with the Aave staking token. I'll get into that. That's not really for people at the beginning. But what I do want to talk about, in essence, of things that you can do with your crypto that you might not be aware of. And remember, like always, this is not for everybody. Like you have to understand, you know, what MetaMask is. You have to understand smart contract risk. You have to understand you're paying for gas for everything. But let's go through it. So like I said, at the end of the day, Aave for the most part is a lending borrowing platform. So you go over here, you go to the home section and I'm just talking about the Aave market. I'm not talking about the Uniswap LP token. So it's primarily just focusing on the lending and borrowing. So you go to Aave and you have to have MetaMask or you don't have to have it. I use MetaMask because I'm using the desktop, but you can use different types of wallets they have. But for this tutorial, I will be using MetaMask and obviously Ethereum mainnet. I've loaded this MetaMask dummy account with 200 bucks of, of ETH. And so basically we go over here and then we can see the types of assets. Let me put deposit over here. We can see the types of assets that we can deposit. So in essence, let's say we want to deposit ETH and over here, they're paying you 0.42%, which is nothing is interesting because ETH2, the beacon chain is starting to launch and they're paying out like 30% APY. So it's going to be a battle between can DeFi platforms uh, be lucrative enough for people to put their ETH? Because if I can get 20% for now on that chain, why would I put it over here? But anyway, so we'll make this video really quickly. Uh, I'll add... 0.1 ETH or 25% of my ETH. I'll continue over here. Uh, so the amount is I'm putting in $55 as of today. I submit and MetaMask will pop up. Gas fees is three bucks. You can change the gas fees if you want. You can go fast, average, slow. This is the preset one. So you can go to advanced even and you can make it faster. Uh, just for the basic, I'll go fast. I'll click save. So it'll cost me $3.36 to transfer $55. So, you know, for the roots chain for Ethereum right now, it's fucking costly. Anyways, it is what it is. Hopefully with layer two, it'll be much cheaper. So you click save, confirm. So with gas and everything will be $58. Boom. And uh, we'll come back to this as soon as it's done. All right, success. We have deposited our ETH. We can then now go to the dashboard, right? And then as you can see, we have 0.12 ETH, which is $55 of ETH at uh, annual rate of not even a percentage, 0.42%. Now, the reason why people would deposit any type of collateral going back to deposit is they want to take it as a loan. Now, there's a couple of benefits for that. Number one, depending on what you're doing in the industry, maybe you're a trader, maybe you need that cash, at least in North America, United States and Canada, a loan is not a taxable event. So if you pay back your loan, you're not getting taxed. So it's a great way for people to uh, be more tax efficient. Okay. So basically that's one way. Another way, if traders see opportunity, for example, if they can deposit this ETH, but then you can see a stablecoin true USD is only 1.2% or even USDC is 3.2%. It's very low interest rate. So they'll take this as uh, they'll loan this out, right? Using their collateral. And they'll go out there and maybe do some other trades. So basically, 
what they're what what this entails is their capital is better spent being used as collateral as opposed to just sitting on it so in essence you know my eth right now is staked over here i can go to borrow and this is the types of collateral i can borrow in this essence let's say we want to borrow i don't know let's say we want to borrow die oh well, i was looking at deposits so sorry the borrowing over here is seven percent seven percent nine percent so let's say we want to borrow die i want to borrow die what's cool about ave is they automatically show you your risk factors <clears throat> and why this is important is you don't want to be liquidated so basically you can see over here it dies off peg a little bit so it's a dollar two utilization rate is 56 percent so basically with my 55 dollars the max i can borrow is 41 dollars uh so let's say to keep it safe usually what they say you know you want to keep it kind of in the green area because what happens is let's say eth drops all of a sudden and we've seen this happen in crypto all the time your collateral unless you up it to match the utilization rate meaning the collateral how much collateral you have compared to the amount that you're borrowing you will be liquidated meaning you lose your collateral so let's say for example with this video i go max and i borrow 41 dollars of die from my 55 dollars of eth that i have staked and let's say eth drops tomorrow 25 percent 30 percent if and sometimes you know a lot of people have bots to do this automatic so sometimes you can't even save it but let's say if i don't up my eth collateral to match the utilization rate i will lose my 55 dollars of eth this is why it's recommended on Aave over here as you can see that you go a little bit safer and so i won't do it for the sake of this video because i don't need to i just wanted to show you how to deposit it but basically what you do is you can now borrow I can borrow, click continue. Once again, you got to pay for gas fees. This is what I said at the beginning, guys. This isn't for everybody. But if you have crypto assets and you see better arbitrage opportunities, meaning you might <clears throat> you might have opportunities doing some trades, you might have some opportunities for higher interest rates somewhere else, you might have some opportunities for some flash loans. We'll get into videos afterwards. This is why people kind of use Aave. So that's it in a nutshell. So Aave is a really good platform for borrowing lending it's changing all the time they're adding assets uh they're adding different types of pairs the utilization rates are changing and recently they did a migration from the old token lend to the ave token and they started doing staking now this is a more kind of a complicated section of ave it's not for everybody to be honest so i don't really want to go into it i'll make a whole different video of why staking ave and as you can see it's in safety module it's like you know they just started off with this so this isn't for your average joe then you can get into the government so basically hey what do i want to have an ave but this isn't for everybody like i i showed ave to a couple of friends of mine who don't know about DAOs, who don't know about crypto but you could they understand the lending and borrowing they understand hey if i use my no different than a house you go to your house you use your house as collateral obviously you get way better ltv ratio for your house than crypto crypto's over collateralization house is the opposite no different if you use your car as collateral or you use any type of asset as collateral in this essence <clears throat> when i show this to my semi-crypto or non-crypto friends they get it when i say hey you have crypto whether you have uh you know ether or other erc20s or you can have wrapped bitcoin you can now take this collateral if it's not doing anything you can use that as as your collateral then you can borrow type of other crypto for the, depending on the interest rate and then depending on what you want to do maybe you need to do something with it or maybe you want to do some trades but that's ave in a nutshell and uh I think it's really cool. I think it's one of the best projects in the space. I think it's one of the best founders in the space. I'm super bullish on it. I think it's awesome. I use it all the time. Um, I'm constantly keeping up to date of what they're doing. Like always, caveat, this isn't for everybody. This is very for a small select group of people who really understand the smart contract risk, understand Web3, understand they got to pay for gas for everything. But we've come a very, very long way in the last two, three years. Like we're talking about, you know, something here that's permissionless to a degree. Like I said, they do have admin keys that they can change, but that's why I said quotations, permissionless to a degree where I don't need permission to take a loan. I can take the pre-existing collateral that I have, 
then I can take a loan. So that's it. That's Avi in a nutshell. If you guys have any questions or comments for me, leave a comment below this video and uh, I'll see you guys soon with the next one. Peace out. <laughs>